Let's begin by importing our vector file in SVG format. Use mouse roller to zoom in on the imported object. Let's join all the imported paths together as one object. Rename it to something easy to recognize. Move the origin to the center of the object and the object to the center of the world. Then convert it from a curve into a mesh. We are now ready to modify the shape of our imported object. We could start by using the extrude tool to make it look solid. To make sure it looks good, select all the side faces and use the smooth tool. To remove excess faces, add the decimate modifier to the object and set planar to 17 degrees. Let's add some more height to the object. Select the top faces and drag them upwards. Before we modify some details, Let's apply that decimate modifier permanently. A detail we could add is trim the top edges with the bevel tool and make the object's shape look more realistic.
It looks a bit choppy now with the decimate tool we used a while ago. We might have to add some faces back to restore back the curves. We could do that by using the bevel tool again. Instead of faces, this time we use bevels on the edges. The choppy thumb needs it. Hold Ctrl key to select edges from one end to the other end. Let's smooth this choppy part out. Looks better now. Don't you agree? After all that operation, let's select all the side faces again and use the smooth tool one more time. We are finished with our simple model construction. We now ready to set up for rendering. Let's put in a flat ground underneath for the object shadows to drop on. Switch to the Cycles Render. I almost forgot to add default material to our subject so it will reflect light better. The default light is not bright enough for our small subject on the floor. Let's select the light and move it closer to our model. Move the floor close enough to our model as well. With some space for the shadow to appear soft. Moving things around in three-dimensional space can be tricky. Use the numpad keys to change views.
you may have not noticed. I have changed the light from sunlight to spotlight before I moved its location in the scene. That's a bit too bright. Let's change the size of the spotlight from 0 0.1 to 1. Lessening its concentration and intensity. Now that it looks good, we can now render the scene from the camera's view. We can do that in a separate tutorial. This has been prepared for you by Pixelsplasher.com. Like what YouTubers always say. Click subscribe and thanks for watching.